That took a lot. Hi everyone, uh, my name is KH, or if you prefer, I thought it's fine also. Uh, this GitLab intro is not going to be as quick as I planned anymore, because we had a slow start. But I'm just going to cover a little bit about uh, what I do in my daily work, why we use GitLab, uh, what it is, what we consider, how to get started very briefly, and other things that you can do with GitLab. So, um, for those of you who know me, uh, thanks for staying for after the pizza. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, I'm in a dialogue technology team. That's this purple bubble at the bottom. We are six people. We're part of a 60-man department doing language technology. Part of a 600-strong 600, 600 institute that does Infocom research in one half of ASTAR which is a total of 6,000 people. Now the blue circles along the way are kind of controllers that are in charge of our, our daily life uh, in terms of IT. Um, the one <coughs> on the most outside here, um, we have to talk to them if we want to get virtual machines to do stuff. Uh, these people are responsible if everything goes down. And these people talk to these people to pay the money in case we need to buy stuff. So this is kind of the drama that I have to deal with, or I used to have to deal with on, day, on a daily basis. And triple that because we're dealing with government money for most of, taxpayers' money for most of that. So we have to be extra responsible and accountable, and that means more paperwork. Right. So my team does dialogue technology, and we are a team of six with um, different backgrounds. So dialogue technology basically is, we try to build something that works like Siri for um, any number of platforms and any number of purposes. But we have people who used to, are more, are more familiar with programming in MATLAB. People who came from a robot, robotics background, they do C++. There's a variety of languages. Some people do C++ and Python. Um, some prefer to use, uh, are focused on more the user experience development. And there's me at the bottom trying to support everyone. So the circles there, here, are the preferred operating systems that we use. Um, two people are exclusively Windows. Two are Linux and Windows. One's a Mac. And I'm on Linux. So there's quite a bit of diversity in a small team like uh, ours. And uh, basically, what happens when we want to do something is we deploy a technology for testing on a virtual machine. right? And then we need to ask for permission to, to get ports open, and this takes two months. Um, never mind. <laughs> yeah. I should not start complaining now. So basically, right, this is that diagram from before. <coughs> um, yeah, so we have these guys who are in charge of um, project management. And the thing that they have is called SVN for source control. Um, they have an admin in charge of SVN, which I think changes every year or so, uh, and has no prior experience. So basically, we don't really use SVN, meaning we don't really use version control. And at the ground level, this means uh, we have to compare MD5 sums, if you're lucky, uh, or timestamps, or we look at, we right click on the DLL and look at the file size and hope it's the same. <laughs> yeah. So I said we should use a new projector. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, we should probably use Git. I mean, okay, we, we had SVN, right? And SVN is a different concept from um, Git. Uh, but the way that we were using SVN before, uh, as far as I gathered, was the project starts. We have a new project. Project management says, we start an SVN for this project. Everyone is happy. Uh, accounts are added. And you then 
uh, commit some stuff into the SVN at the beginning, right, for landmark purposes. Then at each milestone, maybe three or six months down the line, you commit another bunch of stuff in. <coughs> and then you use it again at the end of the project so that you have a copy of whatever you did. And that gets archived. Basically, we weren't using SVN either, like I said before. And um, we had to use emails, uh, long chains of emails with different patches, um, which were kind of hard to track down. Um, yeah, so we decided, I, dis I decided, <laughs> sorry, um, that, you know, since we're not using SVN at all, just go with Git. It's harder to learn, sure, but once you learn it, ideally, you know, you get something that works better and people can actually commit stuff. It's not that painful. You don't have to be, cons uh, you don't have to be controlled by the central department if, let's say, a new team member joins. Uh, you can share your work with a certain number of people and you can do all this um, on your own terms, basically. Right. So Git, right? And then there was GitHub. Uh, the thing is, we decided not to use GitHub because we are a very IP-centered uh, institution. And we didn't want things to go public that we didn't have control over. So it had to be inside. And then looking at a few alternatives, I came across GitLab and being staffed for time, <coughs> I tried this first. So GitLab is an open source project management um, hub for your Git repositories. It gives you a wiki, uh, issues, and you have um, group-based uh, team management as well. So you can have uh, users in various different groups. You install it on your own server, uh, very important for us. And you can give people different levels of access to the code as needed. Again, very important for us. And finally, emails would be used not to pass patches around, uh, but to notify people or to share work, or to see that something has changed. All right. So there's obviously more stuff that you can do with GitLab, but we haven't really got around to doing that yet. I think you can see why. So GitLab, um, across compared to the other solutions, came across as a bit easier to deploy because you would just have a um, one-click install package or you can use VMs. Uh, really? Uh, you still get to keep your code in-house, right? No uh, publishing of your, your source code outside. Um, and the product itself is in active maintenance. So you have patches uh, when there are security leaks. And every 22nd of the month, there is a new minor version out. Uh, why not other things? So GitHub, we've looked at briefly before. This would be because it's public and you we don't want to put links there. Same for Bitbucket. Um, SourceForge was just too old. There's Gitorious, but it got acquired by GitLab along the way, so there was that. Um, Codeplex, does anyone use Codeplex? Okay. And then there's um, the DIY solution where you have like just Git web to visualize your repo and then you maybe use file system permissions to control who can get to what, and then uh, if you have time, or if you think you have time, you can get into this. Of course, uh, Shashank is going to cover another talk later on, where, which will probably give you another alternative to do on this. So what GitLab gives you is the community edition where you can just do, for Ubuntu's case, uh, app get install. 
after adding the repo. Uh, or you can download the table and try to do everything yourself, which uh, being staff for time, I thought for some reason that was the better solution. And uh, I ended up being a, a lot more staff for time. So do it yourself, guys. Uh, don't do it yourself. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are virtual machines configured, pre-configured for um, GitLab that you can use. And there are also Docker images, but um, we are kind of far down the tech chain to explore Docker at the point. So we haven't really looked into that. There's also a bunch of other things that you can do with GitLab. Um, it has, as of version 7 or so, um, inbuilt continuous integration. So you don't have to, well, you can, if you want, plug in your own other stuff. Uh, you can use webhooks as any fairly experienced Git user should uh, know about. There's an API, like the GitHub API. Except, of course, this time you're talking to a server within your own network. Um, there's LDAP integration, which means you don't have to create new user accounts and you can uh, connect everyone using the accounts that they already have for, uh, for work. So that's supposed to save you a layer of hassle, but at the time, uh, we were using an old version of Outlook that uh, gave another whole bunch of troubles, so I decided not to go with that. Um, then there is... Um, integration with chat services, uh, Slack or HipChat if you like, uh, but they they prefer pushing uh, Mattermost, which is again another equivalent. I have no comment on whether this is slower than Gitter or not, but let's see. <laughs> so I'll just finish off by showing you a few screenshots of the stuff that we have. If I can figure out how to work this. So you get a nice login page. And um, when you log in, you have a bunch of projects that you do, that you want to keep track of. And there's an activity feed as well, which, is, which I didn't take a screenshot of. Uh, you get to manage issues. You have wikis per project. And you get to see the teams also. So here is, that's an issue. <laughs> yep. So there was going to be a list of issues. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's <coughs> getting that. Yep, I probably have to hold this in place uh, better, better in mind. Uh, list of issues that you can assign to people as you would expect from any responsible project management software. Um, you can tie them to milestones if you want. And um, you can set different urgencies and give comments on the issue as well. This is a list of the groups that I'm in personally. So, you know, you can maintain sanity while you're working with other teams. And this is my commit history, super active. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't really push, but then again, yeah, you don't push firefighting stuff to you. Um, okay, so that's a few looks at what GitLab is like. And I would have to end here with... What? Okay. Hello. Yep. Any questions? <laughs> so I, it's 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 kind of emblematic of the work that I do that I have to do this just to get a question slide on. But yeah, if you have any questions, I'd like to take them now or later. What's the CI to like? Have you? Uh, no. No, I'm in the process of convincing the rest of the team to use Git. So I've got the Linux people on board, mm. but yeah, I'm also hunting for um, 
graphical client for the Windows and Mac people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've been using the Linux kernel deploying GitLab in my in my workplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, I use the Omnibus package for installation. Mm -hmm. So would you rather say that uh, whether Omnibus is better or uh, like an AWS AMI, uh, AMI from community or maybe something about Docker? I don't know about Docker, how is this mm -hmm. Docker? So well, what would you say is a better one to have, you know, like to get updates faster? Because in case of Omnibus, like yes. you can you know, just do APT get update and it yes. updates automatically. I like that. Um, I, I prefer to use a simple command to update the system. So I'm, I'm in favor of the Omnibus package. Um, in terms of AWS, um, I haven't looked at that solution because we would have to pay for that. Yeah. And the same litany of complaints apply. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Excellent. So thanks for your time.